All right, this video will address um, completing the production phase, specifically the basic requirements of the production phase of the bootstrap, intro to bootstrap assignment. So you will have already completed your design phase part one before you attempt this. And in this video, we won't be completing the whole implementation of the bootstrap, but rather addressing the to-dos in the index.html that's provided with the project. So here are the basic requirements that we'll be covering, and I, I suggest that you also look at the rubric to see what you need to do to get full credit on this phase. But we'll be looking at basically getting Bootstrap and getting our index.html to work. So I've created a little task list for myself about what I want to do. I'm going to be working on the meta section, favicons, um, title content. I'm going to be adding um, a, um, a viewport to that. And then I'm going to be adding some um, bootstrap uh, so that I can um, implement my nav. And then I want to get my images into a carousel. And I want to set some classes so that my portfolio lines up with different columns at different uh, viewport sizes. And then finally, I'm going to add uh, some CSS to my footer so that using Flexbox so that I can get right and left adjustment. All right, so where I'm starting now is I'm working here in my, in my local um, environment using Visual Studio Code, but you could be doing the same thing on code anywhere in the cloud if that's how you're set up. So basically, starting with the index.html, I'm going to go into my meta section, and I'm going to take care of some of the uh, to-dos in here, which, first of all, we want to get our viewport in. So let's set up a meta for the name equals viewport. And this is going to allow our browser to look at what size of of a viewport it is currently loading, and then make adjustments um, according to media queries as to which CSS might be applied. And this was what is going to Bootstrap will rely on to uh, carry out its CSS commands. So we're adding initial scale equals one and shrink to fit. equals no. OK. Now, typically, when I'm working on um, code like this, I really like to take a look after each addition to make sure that I haven't undone something that was already working, um, and just to make sure everything's good. So this is currently what this index.html looks like. I don't have any nav. I don't have any images. And it's, it's not laid out re really nicely yet, because I haven't added any bootstrap. But on the other hand, I don't see any problems. If I inspect um, the key initial scale is not recognized. Let's see, what did I do here? Oh, I made a typo. So there we go. So that's why I like to kind of keep an eye on, I keep the uh, console open while I'm making changes and just make sure I haven't made any typos. But I can fix them before I go too far in my modifications. All right, so after I add something like that, I'm going to take out the to-do, because we don't want to leave these to-dos in there. Um, you can easily pull this code back or look at it online if you forget what the to-dos were later, later on, but it's a good idea to keep your code clean. OK, now the description is um, I'm creating um, a site called The Wine Shop uh, for my project. So I'm going to just call this Wine Shop. Well, let's just call it The Wine Shop. And my name is Becky Peltz. And so I've got that in there. And again, I'll just double check I haven't made a typo, because even something like that can cause a typo. And then for the title, again, I'm going to give it the title of my web page. 
And when I do this, I should start seeing that. All right, and finally, in my notes, I have decided I want to use a favicon named favicon.ping. So I've created this favicon, which is really just a, um, a, a ping file with W for wine shop. And I've just downloaded this from Wikimedia as something that is free and, and, and I'm able to use it for commercial purposes even and uh, modify it. So let's put that in um, our meta. All right, and looks like you can see it's already been applied because I've been practicing with this. So I've got my, my favicon in there. And I think that takes care of where I'm at for my index.html. And um, then what I might do is uh, take a look at my notes again and see that I pretty much completed what I wanted to do to this point, and the next step would be to work on my to-dos. Now, one of the things I like to do, too, is as I'm working, if I get to a point where I've completed a section of work, I will go ahead and save that. So I'm going to do a git add. Oh, and note that I'm already, if, I look, if you look at my status, I'm already working in GH Pages. So I've already taken the steps to um, create the GH Pages branch and then push to that so that I am working now in GH Pages. I'm just going to leave master alone. And from now on, I'll be working in GH Pages. Now, I'm going to save this work because I, want, I don't want to have a lot of unopened work. So, again, we're, we're, we have some changes to the index.html. So, I'll do a get add. And I just use a dot here. Now, I could say index.html since there's only one item. But if I had a lot of items, the dot could say, just go ahead and add all of my items and get commit m. And I'll just say, um, add code for meta section and get push. All right, and that gets me to a point where I've completed the meta section. All right, so now I want to move on to my navigation. And in this section, I need to navigate my IA design. And we have a couple of, uh, we have a little nav section here that doesn't really do much. You can see in here it's got this little dark bar, but we don't have any navigation. So in my notes here, I've said, okay, I want to do it for a responsive nav. And let's take a look at what that is. So that, I mean, talking about this nav that was provided with the original BlackRock Digital Modern Business Solution. And this nav gives us the option to it's sort of a template for all sorts of different navigation. And then this would be the start bootstrap would always take us home. So I like this. I want to use it. It also gives us some things in case you haven't had a chance to explore it. Where in a, um, if we're in a responsive layout, click on the toggle device toolbar here. And in the responsive layout, you can see that it, it actually hides those navigation items and puts them under this hamburger, these little horizontal bars, and I can access them in a nice compact way when I'm in a smaller device. And in responsive mode, it will actually switch from a full nav to this hamburger. And that's what I want to implement in my wine shop. So let's take a look at how that might work. And um, I'm not going to worry about these warnings. I think I'll just take a look only at errors. Sometimes we get extra warnings from Chrome that are not really pertinent to the work that we're doing. So going back in here, I'm going to implement that. And um, the way I'm going to do this, the easiest way for me to do this is to just go to this page that has already implemented it. Now it has a different um, information architecture than I'm going to use, 
But the way I can just grab this template is go to View Page Source, find this nav section, and then copy this whole thing into my buffer. So Control C, go back to my code, and highlight this existing nav and replace it with the template nav. <clears throat> now if I save that and go back into my wine shop, you can see that I've got all of that code in there. And that leaves me with just having to modify it for my specific application for my wine shop application. Okay, and to see what I wanted to do in the wine shop, let's look at my design. So I have this design where I'm an index HTML. It points at blog, which point at blog one, two, three, and so on, one, two, or however many I want. Uh, something called top wines, contact, and about. So this, so I'm going to be creating all of these pages, or at least three of them, in addition to my 404. Those are going to be the pages that I implement. But in this index, I want to start by creating a navigation that will get me to blogs, top wines, contact, and about HTML. So let's see how that might work. Um, I'm going to go back into the code, and let's look at this. So also, I'm going to want to change this brand to be my own brand. And for brands, you can use just text. You could put an image in there. It's, it's up to you how you want your design to work. But let's just call it the wine shop. Okay, and then looking a little closer at what they've actually got, there's a button here which is going to be that, that button you see at the lower device size. And that ID on that button, the target for that, matches up to this collapsible section, which contains the, um, the actual nav that I want to implement. All right, so uh, let's take a look at how this is set up. We have, this is their setup about services contact. We're going to change that a little bit. We are going to have um, our first uh, item will be the blog. So let's find that, the blog drop down. And I'll just search for that. So here's the blog. And so I'm just going to grab this whole list item. And that will be my first. And I'll just control X that. And that will be my first list item. So this, this unordered list is actually what's setting up my navigation. And I'm going to start by having my blog listed. And you can see that the names here are blog one, blog two, and blog post will be. And that all now move this over here. So that gets me the blog. And then my next item, so just looking at my I've got the blog and my blog post. And then top wines. Let's say for top wines, I'm just going to grab one of these simple nav items and copy that here. And we'll just say top wines. So I'm going to need to create a new page or rename an existing page to top wines. And then I'm going to have a contact and an about. So I've got a contact here. I'll just grab that. Again, I'm just doing control X. And then I've got the existing about. And now I can really just remove all of these list items. And let's see, I need this one. And I'm going to do a format. If you're on code anywhere, that would be a beautify, edit beautify, because that helps me to see that I've got clearer what I've got and how it's all lined up. So let's save that and go look at what we've got here. So I've got my blog. I've got top wines. Now I don't have a page called top wines yet, 
I've got a contact page and I've got an about. And when I go responsive, I get my nav items as I would expect. So this looks good to me. Let's go back into the code and clean it up a little bit. So I don't need this to do anymore. But, you know, sometimes I like to leave a little bit of documentation, especially when I have big sections of code like this nav. And I might put in like an end nav. And that helps me to, to just navigate this code a little easier. And I can see that I've got all the pieces that I need right here um, for my uh, navigation. So now I want to go back to my work list and see what's, what's next on my list of to-dos that I'm looking through. Um, so we've taken care of nav. We've taken care of getting our viewport specification into meta. Next is our carousel. And in the carousel, right now, we just see that we have 1900 by 1080 um, slides. And we've got room for three of them. You can see that these little dots represent a way to navigate through this, these slides. Um, in order for this to begin on this, we're gonna, you're going to have already collected your images. And this is where organizing your images can really be helpful. So you can see under my images folder, I've actually organized my carousel images. And you see there's actually five of them here. And I've got an extra one just to show you what a, an image that isn't uh, well pixelated looks like. Um, a smaller image stretched out into a larger area. But I'm basically going to have C1 through C4. And I've actually numbered them in the order that I want them. So I have some grapes. I have some wine. I have pouring the wine, and then I have drinking the wine. So I've actually organized them in the order that I want them to appear in the slideshow. And now I want to get them into my web page. So let's take a look at this a little closer. We have in the header section, the first thing we have is this carousel. So you can see it starts out here with the um, indicators. And those are this is this list item that makes up these three little selector lines for, that allow us to navigate. I've only got three of them, and I've actually got four pictures. So I'm going to add another one so that all four of my pictures will be accessible. And then I've got to actually add the images to the slides. So here we go into this section called Carousel Inner. And this is going to be implemented as divs. Um, and you can see right now we've, we're just putting these placeholders. And this is a handy little um, website to look into, placeholder IT. When you're designing and you haven't got your images yet, you can see out here this is a place where you can set up sections of space by different sizes. And, and that's what we're going to actually be replacing here with actual images. So let's start with, this is my, these are going to run in order. So this will be my C1 image. And so all I need to do is I'm sitting here in the HTML and I just need to drill down images carousel C1 to get that image loaded. And so let's take a look, images, carousel, C1 JPEG. OK. Let's just take a look at that before we go any farther. And there it is. We got our first slide, and we have this image. Now, none of our other images are implemented. But one of the things is I don't really think I need to have a description or a header in here. Now, you can put a description or header in there, um, and sometimes it makes sense. But you want to be sure that your description and header are visible. Let me show you what, that, what I mean by that. So let's put our next image in here. So this one, images, and again, it really helps to have these kind of organized under your images folder. 
to make it easy to find and easy to work with. So if we put in that second image, this is the problem. If you have a, if you have a um, caption here and it's not well, it's not visible against whatever color your image is, that can be a problem. And so if you wanted to keep that in there, you would want to be sure that you um, had that colored properly. So let's say I made that color black. And this is this is looking at that second image only. When I work in this area here, it's specific for this 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 image. That looks a little better. Um, maybe I would need to put a background on it. You know, and then you you might run into some issues with design. Like, it, does that really look good in my overall design? So you, if you do want to keep your captions, you might want to look at how you how you uh, color them and what their background color is. So let's say, well, I don't really want that to stick out so far. So maybe I would put in um, a width. Since these are divs, I can set this width on them. Um, so I might say like 300 pixels, okay, and that give me something like that. And then now I've lost my centering. So these are things that you want to like, if you, and, and I I'm, think it's good to have them in there, but you want to do some individual styling to be sure that you are not, that you are able to see them if they're there against whatever background they happen to be. And so this is part of your assignment is to add your own styling um, at, as needed as you have designed for your, for your um, project. But getting back to the carousel, let's finish filling, out, filling this out. So I've got two more images. Carousel. C3. And... We need to add one more of these because we have actually got a fourth image. And this is four. Fourth image, fourth slide, fourth slide, and C4. Okay, so now I should have all of my images loaded. Take a look at console, make sure there's no errors. But I'm not going to address styling these. Styling can, can actually take quite a bit of time, and it's, it's worth it. But I'm going to leave that as a side project when I'm all done getting my to-dos done. So for now, I am just going to remove these. And in fact, in this assignment, you are not required to come up with your own content. So having these here is not really part of the requirements for this project. So just to make this look better, I am going to take out my captions. So let's just see how that looks. So now I'm just giving my user some images to look at as they look through the rest of my web page. All right, so that is how we're going to complete that section. All right, uh, just a note here on image size. Uh, I've got this image uh, in my C1.1. I just want to show you kind of visually. This, this is a very small image compared to the one that I'm actually using. And um, I just wanted to show what that looks like when you try to stretch that out, just to let you see. So if I use that, that smaller image, you can see it becomes distorted and not very clear. So we've kind of taken that smaller bunch of pixels and we've stretched them out into an area that's really too large for them. So this is one of the concerns that you have when you're displaying images, and if you can't get the exact image size that you're trying to shoot for. Often it's better to get it a little bit bigger, but then you don't want to get it so big that 
it takes a long time to download. All right, so we know there's a problem if the image is too small. We see something that looks like, like this. Let's see what we just saw. That, or it's um, kind of blurry looking. Okay, there's also a problem if we get something too large. So let's say we've come out and we've done a search here. I'm, I'm look, looking at labeled for reuse with modification. Um, and I've picked a size that's larger than four megapixels. So I've got this really big picture, 4469 by 2252 pixels, big picture. And I go to the image and let's say I save it and let's put it into this project and I'll put it under carousel and I'll, I'll call it C1.2. Okay, and it's going to come out as a JPEG. So let's save that. Go back to the project. And we should see this image now, C1.2. Okay, so what might be a downside to that? Let's take a look at that. And we'll go back and view what this, how this will look in our image. So here, we're not seeing it too badly. It looks, I mean, it looks fine. Um, what I was trying, what I was wanting to show you is that sometimes a really large image um, large pixel size can take a long time to load. Let's just see if we reveal that in the finder how big that is. Okay, that's 5 meg. I guess 5 meg, not too bad. Um, when I, uh, let's see if I go back here. And by the way, I've got my, my cache set to clear. So if you go to network, disable cache, while I have this um, edit console open, my cache should be clearing. And let's go to that first page and load that hard reload. That loaded pretty fast. So five meg, not so bad. But if you start getting up into the 10 megabyte picture, not pixel, but 10 megabyte, it can start slowing the loading of your picture. And that's also distracting. So there's kind of this happy medium between a small picture and a large picture, a too, a, a too small picture that comes out blurry and a too large picture that loads slowly. All right, let's go back to our, our setup and that looks good. And then maybe we can do a little cleanup, remove the to-dos and probably want to take out these set pictures. So just doing a little cleanup, that makes your page look so much more professional than if you leave a lot of notes that you've made to yourself, or in this case, to-dos from the instruction. That looks pretty good. And that concludes our header and our carousel. Okay, so looking at our next to-do and scrolling down here, We've got our portfolio section. All right, and I've taken some notes on this as well. And what I'm thinking is that uh, in the portfolio section, I want to have columns that are four units at the medium bootstrap threshold and columns that are six units at the small. Now, I really recommend that you uh, read up, watch the video on bootstrap layout where we talk about um, having using the bootstrap grid system because for this uh, four units at the medium threshold six units at the small we'll be using call settings within a bootstrap row in order to get these different dimensions and we'll take a look, close look at what we're aiming for there if you look at the current um, modern uh, pixel you can see that they have the portfolio section three across here Okay, and if we go into our um, responsive setting, you can see that these bootstraps are one across at, at this smallest setting and that they increase. Let's see, and now they're three across. 
So, and then there are two across when we're in this tablet threshold. So we want to replicate what's going on there. In other words, we want it to be one, one, of, one column at the mobile setting, two columns at the tablet setting, and then three columns when we get to a laptop or, or um, desktop setting. And right now, if you look at what we've got, we've got, we haven't put in any images, and they all seem to be just wrapping in a sort of large, small, single column way. So that's what we want to address right now. And with Bootstrap, we can actually take care of this fairly simply. So we're in our row. We've got these portfolio items. The items themselves are made up of these divs. So Here's our picture, here's our description, and we're not going to worry about description here. We're really more focused on images. And if you look, I have a portfolio section. I've only got one image in there, so I'm just going to reuse it for purposes of this demonstration. But depending on how many um, images you have for your portfolio, and actually to fill out this template, I would recommend six images. That will make it so that you can nicely lay out the, the two column, the three column, and the one column um, template. But what I'm going to fill in here is simply the images portfolio p1.jpg. And since I've only got the one image right now, I'm just going to replicate that across all of this. I have the six slots provided by the template, and I've got my single image that will be styled by Bootstrap to fit into that. Okay, so now if I go back and look, you can see these are all the same size, but we haven't put in any call column styling so they don't appear to line up in the order that we want. But they're all the same size image and they're just being repeated. So what do we need to do to get that styling? We need to supply in our item. So again, the I, we have the div for the row. The column is going to be right the next level inside the row, nested right in there. So this portfolio item, we are going to add our call small which we've said we want to be six in our call medium, which we said we need to be four. So a call six small is going to give us the, the six as it's going to take up six units in our grid, which means we're going to end up with two columns at the small size. And then the medium, we said four units, so we should get three columns at the four and above, at the medium and above. So six columns, two columns at the small, three columns at the, at the medium and above. Now we want to copy this into all of our portfolio items. And this should take care of getting our portfolio to lay out correctly. And this is used a lot. It's very handy to be able to so quickly lay out a portfolio. And one thing I might note here, too, is that the, having these pictures relatively the same size is going to be important. Um, so let's just, I'm just curious um, what would happen if I put a different size picture in there, see if it will handle that styling. So let's say at my, say I were to stick one of my carousel pictures in there, which are sized a little bit differently. How well will it handle that? C1. So, and you can see it does, it does handle that pretty well. It, it's setting those sizes for me. So even though they're very different size pictures, it will set those sizes for me. And another thing I might be interested in is what happens if I increase the amount of text. So let's see 
I doubled the amount of text on one of these. Well, it handles that too. So it keeps these two, it keeps everything in this row aligned correctly. And finally, let's just take a look at what happens when I inspect here with my, um, my responsiveness. You can see at this smaller level, um, it's stacking up, it's lining up into one column. As I go a little bigger, I'm going to get my two columns. And as I get even a little bigger, I get my three columns. So this is looking good. Let's go back and clean this up. We can take out this to-do. We can leave the portfolio section just to help uh, us navigate through the code. And I might even put in an end portfolio to help with that. All right. Oh, I haven't saved for a while, so I think I'm going to come down and, and push what I've got out to... Um, I've made some changes. I've added a few um, items for testing. Um, but let's go ahead and push these out. Just make sure that I don't have any errors in there. Yep. And so I'll do my get. Now I've got a few items. So to add them all at once, I'm just going to use the dot, which just tells get to just add all of the files. And then I'm going to hit commit. And I've um, added um, carousel and portfolio. All right, so that gets me, I can feel pretty confident that I'm making progress and I've saved it. All right, now we're ready to work on the final to-do, which is in the footer. And what we want to do is replace this current paragraph footer with a Flexbox, uh, our own coding of Flexbox. Now remember, Flexbox is just a descriptive word for display flex that was introduced and is used in Bootstrap 4 that gives us some responsive layout um, and allows us to do a lot of things like centering and which um, has always been a little challenging, horizontal centering on a page and um, also being able to move, um, move uh, divs to align with the left and right to be covered, you know, centered properly. So we're going to use our own flex and let's take a look where, where we're going with this. So right now, if you look at the design that we're working on, we have a single centered um, uh, copyright your website 217. And where we want to end up with is basically we want to put our copyright and then our name of our website 217 over on the left, left aligned, and we'll put our own name right over here, right aligned. And that has in the past been challenging, but Flexbox has, has made that a lot easier. And we're going to code that right now. It could be done using Bootstrap, but we're going to just uh, do that um, in our, manually in our home, own homegrown way uh, to see how it works. So let's say that what we really want to do is we're going to have two paragraphs. So these two paragraphs, one will con represent containers. And we're going to remove the text center because, well, we can leave that for now. Just to see where we're going with this. And we're going to make this one the name of our site. So whatever the name of our company is. And then on the bottom, which will end up right aligned, we're going to put our own name. OK. And so if you look right now, they're both showing up as centered. And that's because it's picking up this text center, which is handy, good to remember. It's a good way to get your text centered or get your container centered using Bootstrap. But we're going to remove that. And that text white, of course, is just giving us this, this white colored text. So that's pushed everything over to be left aligned. And what we really want is to have these both on the same line with 
the copyright left align and the name right align. So how are we going to do that? And let's let's take a look here at how that might work. So a lot of times when I'm going to be adding some of my own CSS, I'll start by doing it inside of the browser here. So let's take a look at this um, footer section. Here we go. We're in this footer. We have a separate bootstrap container. So this is the same container that we might, we could put a row in there. You know, we could put different kinds of things in it. Basically that container is, is giving us this sort of gutter, this, this margin, rather than being the full width. It's giving us a fixed width centered area. And here's our two pieces that we want to end up on the same line. So what we're going to do is we're going to contain these two in a div that has a display flex. If you've studied the Flexbox resources, the way that it works is that you declare a display flex on the parent container, and then each of the children will contain a flex indicating what to do as the outer container shrinks and grows. So let's go into the code and set that up. Um, first of all, we're going to create this parent container. And let's just set that up, format that. OK, so let's come back here and take a look at what we've got. Again, we're down in the footer. And we've got our container now. And well, the container just is giving us this um, centered content area. Now, this div, I'm going to make this div be hold my display flex. So this will be the parent container that tells me that I'm flexing the content. And you can see that already took this up so that they're on the same line. So now we just want to tell the the browser what these children will do. And um, by the way, there in flex there is the concept of horizontal flexing and vertical flexing. And horizontal flexing is referred to as flex direction row. And it's the default, but I usually include it in my CSS just to be very specific about what I am trying to do, show my intention. Um, and the children, they have already flexed just by virtue of being in this um, container, this flexed container. But I want to be very specific here too and say that they're, you show what their default is. So the flex. Um, property itself is made up of three parts. And there are shortcuts for this, but right now I'm going to do the full part. So 0, 1, auto. And these three parts indicate, so that didn't make any change because again this is the default. But this is saying flex grow is 0, so as the page grows there's really no effect. As the page shrinks though, there is the effect that this shrinks proportionally. The 1 indicates proportional. And then the auto tells me where did I start with. And the auto indicates that it's based on the, the current size and width of the item that is flexing. And again, these are the children. And so I'll be wanting to do that for both of them. Um, so we're going to just give this flex. So again, the pattern is that you set display flex on the parent, and then you set flex on the children, and 0, 1, auto is the default. Um, and now we want them to spread apart, and that is handled by giving direction to the parent. So I want these to be right aligned, and so let's give this a justify content. Now justify refers to affecting the layout in the axis that you are flexing. So I'm flexing the horizontal axis, so I will use justify content. I can affect, if I have like things stacked on top of each other, 
the other axis using a line. But in this case, I want to affect the the row that I or the the axis that I'm actually flexing, which is the horizontal axis. So justify content and space between. So you can see there's three three different space around, space between, space evenly. What I want to get this left and right alignment is space between. And so I give it that. And that's that's really neat. We've never been able to do something so simple with straight CSS. Well, let's take a look at what you would get. Space around, we just end up with uh, equal spacing around each of our children. And space evenly, we get something that looks somewhat like space around, where we're just it's just dividing the um, the entire row up into even chunks and making that an even spacing. But to get the the left right alignment, which is something that we haven't been able to do easily in the past, let's see. Oops, um, space around space. Oh, sorry, space between. And there you go. So now we just need to get these uh, styles that we've been playing with out here in the browser into our um, into our web page. And so to do that, I am going to tag these with some classes. And I'm going to make um, a class here, not here. I'm going to leave that container alone. I'm going to make a new class on this parent called class, and I'm going to call it footer flex. OK, and that gives me my parent class. And in here, these in zero, I don't know where those came from, but we're going to have um, flex, or we're going to call these footer item flex. So I'm flagging these so that I can assign some styles to them in a style sheet. OK. And so I've got footer, footer flex and footer item flex. And I'm going to go to my style.css footer. And these are classes, so footer flex and footer item flex. OK, and then looking back at what I did in my parent footer that I now call footer flex. Oh, I've lost them because it my IDE refreshes my page when I change it. But what I did in footer flex was I gave it a display flex. That's the parent setting. And I gave it a flex direction a row. So that, the, that was the default horizontal alignment setting the thing, the axis I'm flexing on to be the row rather than the column. If I flex on column, I would get that, I would be able to control the vertical alignment, vertical, vertical justification. Anyway, in my footer, footer, fly item, foot, footer item flex, I'm going to set this. And again, this was the default, the flex shrink, the flex grow, the flex shrink, and the basis. And let's just see how that worked out. OK. Um, we're not seeing footer item flex. Footer item flex. Let's just take a look at this. Flex auto flex. Display flex. Oh, we didn't set the justify content. So coming back in here, we need that to happen in the parent. So justify content space between. All right, and that gives us our left aligned copyright and our right aligned name. And that takes care of the to do. So let's just take a look at the code again and see if we can clean it up at all. Definitely can remove this to do. And we could leave the footer and the 
closing out that container. I'd probably put this footer above. Oh wait, that closes out that container. This container is closed by that. I might take that out. I don't really need that. But I might put this footer in here. Okay. Notice um, here I've got uh, JavaScript. And just a reminder that the carousel and the navigation where we're handling user interaction like button clicks, those depend on JavaScript and the setting for JavaScript is, that is required by Bootstrap is that we include jQuery, which it uses, and then its own minified JavaScript bundle. So anytime you place a component like a nav on a page and you want that button that you see when you shrink and grow to work, you need to have this. So this this needs to actually get copied to every page, and I might actually just add that to my list here. So let's just say, yeah, that's kind of add to every page with Bootstrap, Bootstrap interaction. I think that that just will help you. It helps me when I write these notes to myself to remember what I need to do, what needs to get done. And then I also have a note down here that I want to add this header and footer to every page, including my 404. So we want to be sure to get these navbar and footer on all pages that we're using. And I just want to show you what I mean by that. But in my code, um, I have got a nav defined. And I basically need to just copy and paste that into every page that I, let's see if I can grab a hold of this, uh, every page in my designed set implemented set implemented set I need to have this same navigation so right now if you look at this I let's say I need I'm going to add it to all three of these blog home blog home two blog home one two and blog post so that when I go to one of these pages I should see the same nav so and it's it's a the best way that you can do this right now is with copy and paste. As you work into using frameworks with JavaScript, you can actually render these things and you don't find yourself copying and pasting so much. But right now, to get this implementation, I'm going to need to go in and replace all of these navs with the nav that I've created. So I'll just paste, generally format, and go to blog home two and and just grab this section and paste and we'll do the post as well. So I am not going to implement this on every single page that I plan to do for my project. But you'll need to do it for yours, but just to save video. So if we go here now to Block Home 1, we do have our nav with the blind shop. And when we click on our brand, it will take us home. And the same for all of these. So you'll want to do that. And you'll also notice that each of these pages needs to have the JavaScript on it because all of these rely on on. JavaScript to implement our um, our button here that is implemented with JavaScript. All right, so I hope that helps um, with that. And then let's just take a look at the notes. Um, we will also want to do that with our footer. So again. The way that you're going to do that is, let's see, um, 
Actually, each of the pages also needs to needs that for the favicon. So if I look at like my index.html and I grab, you'll want to fill out this meta section for each one of those pages as well. So, so each, all of this needs to end up on each of the four pages that you implement. So those are just some nuts and bolts to keep in mind as you're uh, setting this up. Get that all copied out. And then that 404 page, again, when you look at that, um, that's the page that you would show your, your user if they typed in the wrong URL. Um, you're going to want to get that onto, you're going to get want to get the same header and footer, or the same nav and footer on here. And then, of course, you're going to re-implement this with just whatever is in your IA diagram, what your design calls for. All right.
To conclude this section on implementing the Bootstrap 4, I just want to point out again that we do we have provided a couple of sections here, uh, demo uh, folders in the Bootstrap uh, re repository. So the demo grid system, this one will help you to see how to do, will give you a good example of doing a um, kind of the same layout you were doing for portfolio and um, there's a video that goes with it in the resources so be sure and check that out this can help you as a reference on that um, and using media queries um, for different things so you will need to implement media queries to get full credit and so uh, we also have this demo media query folder that will give you um, Let's try this and so you can see what this demo media query is doing. It's actually um, going to show you different size pictures at different responsive levels. So you can see they're taking a little bit of time to load, but this will give you some ideas on how to, what you might do in a media query is to provide different images when you're going to different size viewports and this is implemented in the demo media query so please have a look at these two demo folders in the repo to help you with with setting up media queries and media queries are basically just um, show, provided here in the CSS all right, so I hope that this helps you to, um, you're learning a lot about Bootstrap, um, media queries, Flexbox, and implementing a design. So hope this helps. See you later.